All right, here's the extension many of you have been waiting for. It's Kaitai struct, but in Visual Studio Code. This is an extension I've been developing for about a month now that adds the functionality of Kaitai struct, the powerful declarative binary parsing language, right into Visual Studio Code. There are many features to go over, so let's dive right in. Currently, I have open a KSY or Kaitai struct YAML file. This is the QuickTime MOV.KSY from the Kaitai struct format repository on GitHub. As you can see, it has syntax highlight, but there is more to it. If I hover over one of the keys in this YAML file, a description of what that key does appears. Furthermore, if I move to another line, I have autocompletion complete with a description for almost every option. This is all thanks to the schema that Jellicis and I created. I should note that this doesn't actually come from the extension itself. Rather, because KSY is YAML based, I'm able to use Red Hat's excellent YAML extension, configure a few settings, and be on my way. Now onto what the extension actually does. Well, it does a few main things. It compiles KSY files to a target language, with the debug option if it exists, opens any file as hex in an adjustable hex viewer, compiles KSY files based upon the open file, then it generates a tree view of the parsed components, and my favorite, it creates a powerful, in-depth visualization of all the sections of the file. I'll go from top to bottom. If you right-click on a KSY file in the Explorer panel, you can select the Compile KSY to Target Language option. This will bring up a prompt asking you to select the language and then whether or not to enable debug mode. Upon making your decisions, a parser will be generated in the language you chose. I should really note, uh, at the moment, if you choose to enable debug mode for a language that doesn't support it, nothing really happens aside from an error possibly appearing. This will be fixed later. If you want to open a file as hex, you first need to open the hex editor itself in the command panel. Open that up and choose Open Hex Editor. A new panel should appear featuring the hex editor alongside a settings panel at the bottom. The info tab will be used to display things like the selection range and what values are found at the cursor's position for different types, however that's currently unimplemented. In this settings panel, you can find some ways to adjust the hex editor to your liking. In future versions, there will be settings that allow for the adjustment of editing modes, insert, overwrite, and read only, and saving edited files. For now though, it's read only so I can focus on the Kaitai struct tools. Now to open file as hex, simply right click on it in the explorer menu and click the open file as hex option. If the file is large, it may take a bit of time to load due to the amount of data that needs to be passed to the web view. If all goes well, it should open it just fine and display the hex in the editor. Just hover over the editor and scroll to scroll, click to position the cursor, and click and drag to make a selection. Now that a file is loaded, we can examine its contents by right-clicking on the KSY file and selecting Compile and Examine KSY. Under the hood, this generates and evaluates a JavaScript parser in debug mode, allowing the extension to determine exactly where things are positioned. From this data, it recursively goes through and generates a structure for the built-in VS Code tree view, seen as KS Explorer, as well as the simplified version that gets passed to the web view to display the regions. It's extremely important to note that currently the region or tree view generation always happens in eager mode. This means that if there are somehow too many things to traverse, VS Code could easily hang. Now let's look at the tree view. This contains a simple overview of the parsed file. Everything with subregions can be open to reveal those subregions. This also works on arrays and displays the number of elements within those arrays by the side. You can also see the type of these elements, or if it's a raw value, then that raw value. That is, unless the raw value is just bytes. In that case, the type will just be uint8 array. Clicking on any part of these nodes aside from the expand or collapse button will move the editor to the position of that part. It will also modify the selection to encompass the elements as well. This can be used even if regions are enabled. Back over at the hex editor, if we increase the region depth above zero, you can see that colors start to appear. As the region depth increases, more and more regions appear. 
These additional regions are subregions of the regions at the previous depth. The regions themselves are dynamic in that they'll also adjust themselves based upon the editor's bytes per line and number of lines settings, allowing the user to adjust it however they desire. Hovering over a region will display a custom tooltip that shows the name, size, position, and content of that region if applicable. While hovering over the region container, all regions that aren't hovered over will be grayed out. This enables the user to focus on the particular regions at hand, which is especially useful if, for whatever reason, the colors are misleading. The intensity of the darkness depends upon the number of regions stacked upon one another. This is a side effect of the way the regions are rendered, but I think it actually kind of works out. For those of you curious about how the editor component and its features work, watch this section. The editor was created with an excellent web component compiler called Stencil.js, and made the development of this very complicated component extremely easy. In fact, it's probably the best development experience I've had in a long time. Stencil.js is similar to React on the surface, but it utilizes TypeScript and TSX out of the box. It also uses TypeScript decorators to allow the compiler to detect what properties should have what functionality. In fact, the only reason that this is able to exist in the first place is because Stencil.js compiles all that amazing stuff into web components, a technology that is native to web browsers. This allows me to use them in VS Code web views without using a framework with a lot of overhead like React's Angular Review, while reaping the benefits of a smooth development experience and speed of something native to the browser. I might be able to create a tutorial on how Stencil.js works later, but for now we'll focus on the parts of the editor itself. SVG elements are simply incredible. They allowed me to make the region highlighting functionality of this editor significantly more optimized than they would be otherwise. The regions are dynamically generated SVG polygons. This means that instead of calculating another class for every byte present, I can just say, this is the byte in the row it starts, this is where it ends, and here's the overall height. From that information, a region is generated with a color based upon either the region's custom color or the default, which is based upon the region's depth and index. These default colors have been carefully chosen to ensure that they didn't clash and aren't too harsh on the eyes while also distinguishing them from one another, giving many benefits to the user. Thanks to the calculated start and end bytes, I can tell which regions don't actually need to be generated, saving processing power. However, to allow for Kaizai struct instances, the subregion within each region is still at least looked at to ensure that whatever can be displayed based on the region depth is displayed. This may cause some jank while scrolling with extremely complicated structures, however, in this case I believe it's worth it. Now let's be honest, the default tooltip is fairly ugly and unapplicable for this use case, especially because immediate feedback is appreciated here. That's why I came up with my own solution. However, there is an important problem I had to figure out. How do I create an element that updates its position with that of the cursor efficiently? As it turns out, the answer is by leveraging CSS variables and a few event listeners. Event listeners check whether the cursor is dragged into and out of a region. This toggles whether or not the tooltip is displayed. This also toggles the activation of other events that fire whenever the mouse cursor moves. However, that event is potentially fired hundreds of times a second, so it's important to optimize as much as possible. To circumvent this issue, I create a variable attached to the window that determines when the mouse position CSS variable should be updated. I have the timer set to 50 milliseconds, a significant improvement over what would happen otherwise. Now I have another problem. How do I update the position in a smooth manner? Well, the solution is surprisingly simple. I just add a transition to the CSS controlling the position of the element. Perhaps the best part of this is that the calculation of the transition is handled by a thread running on the GPU, or so I think. All of this culminates in a very efficient tooltip that moves with the cursor in a smooth manner. I would like to thank the developers of Kaitai Struct for even making something as complicated as this possible to learn about in an easy manner. Everyone who works on it now or in the past has indirectly inspired me to do quite a few things. I would also like to give a shout out to at Angel Bertini for his excellent talk, No More Dumb Hex, something that inspired the idea of a dynamic hex editor, and Kotskonomis for creating the web-based IDE. Finally, check out Stencil.js if you want to learn more about one of the best ways to build web components. If you liked this video, this extension, or just want to help me keep building different tools in general, please subscribe to me on Patreon or buy me a Ko-Fi. 
Building tools like this for others to use and adding features to open source projects is my dream job, but it would be kind of hard to call it a maintainable job without some sort of income. Oh, and uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching.